Hey guys, we're over in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Really cool view. We've got some cranes and this old industrial building. They're actually tearing some of this down and, and really cleaning this spot up. I'm with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes. And your shop's hey just like right over there, right? Yeah, right in this building, Navy Green building over there. Yep. It's neat. I, we're just finding these really peaceful places because sometimes it's it's chaos. And I, I really want to give you guys a really thorough, awesome look at the new Reesen Mueller Paxter 40. And is this the 60 over here? That's right, yep. We got the 60. Okay, so I've already looked at like, I think the 80 before. So they have three sizes of this cargo bike. And I, I think that allows you to do just tons of stuff, whether you're hauling actual cargo, or in this case, like precious cargo. They've got this really cool setup for kids. Um, as you can see, there's, it's like a five point harness in here and a padded cushion and even a little spot for their feet to go. That's so cool. And this canvas is soft, this headrest up here. So if they're smaller, their head can go there. Or if they're taller, it can go a little higher. And if you're not riding with kids, that's like a peekaboo window. You can actually see steering. You see the, you see the light on the ground? <laughs> that's one of the really neat things about this bike is that no matter how you're using it, there seem to be a lot of options uh, for comfort, for utility. And we were also talking about some of the other Reese Mueller products, like the Load. It's a full suspension electric cargo bike. Right, right. Yeah. And, I, and I love that one, but what's, I mean, we were talking about kids in that one. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, there's a lot of different use scenarios where this makes sense. Sometimes a longer cargo bike, you might have challenges, particularly in a city where maybe you have to put the bike in an elevator or yeah. these different scenarios for storage. Or if you just have one child, uh, maybe your child's a little bit longer, so you actually can kind of go up a little bit Versus further. Versus hitting where, your head. Yeah, um, that's yeah. right. And, and uh, facing your kid. I mean, so what we're getting at here, this thing is, it's not much longer than a regular bike. I have that spec and all the other measurements back at the site, but most electric bikes or bikes in general, kind of that 72 inch length. And a lot of the other Paxter models are much longer. And even the load is, is longer. Right. And absolutely. with the load, your kids are kind of facing forwards, whereas this one, they're facing you. So they won't hit their head and you can communicate to them, talk to them and, and enjoy that. So it's just, it's neat to see them refining the product. And other ways that they've refined it, I noticed, is their new Suntour XCM suspension fork here uses a through axle. So it's a little bit stiffer, sturdier for carrying that weight. I think the maximum load, were we saying it's about 352 pounds? On the on the whole bike, yeah. So I think I think it's 100 plus on the, on the front here, uh, but the total capacity is about 350 pounds. Okay, whereas some of the, the larger Paxter models could carry like 200 up front plus another 180 in the, you know, so each one of these has great details and specs at the Reese Mueller site. We'll try to just focus on um, giving you the rest of the overview and a walk around. The, the suspension fork is always active. It does have preload adjust. You have to adjust both of those simultaneously and kind of keep them matched to, to keep it even. It's not an air fork, it's a spring fork. Um, there's no lockout, but with electric bikes, I mean, you're getting a lot of efficiency and power already having a motor. So I, I feel like that's a, a pretty good option. It's not like you're gonna get off and like come up here and adjust it. Um, and th there's not a whole lot of travel on that, but it's, I mean, we are saying 70 millimeters. Yeah, 70 mil travel. Yep. Yeah, so actually maybe more than I thought. Some of these are only like 50 millimeters. So you're getting good travel. Awesome tires, Schwabi Big Ben Plus. We've got the Performance Line Green Guard, Snake Skin. So they're puncture resistant. And that's important because you don't have quick release. And especially if you're carrying a big load and it's heavy, you really don't want to get a flat. It'd be not a lot of fun to deal with. I think that's a five millimeter hex on the front wheel. And then we've just got nuts on the rear wheel. They don't have quick release in part because it's using the belt drive in this configuration. Remember, this is the new Vinci option. They also have a touring option, which just has a 10 speed traditional cassette. It's Shimano Dior derailleur. Um, the price point on that's like 58.29. So that's really the starting, the entry price if you wanted to get uh, the, the Paxter 40. Uh, once you go up to Navinci, you're able to shift at standstill. It's a continuously variable transmission, so it's really smooth, uh, really wonderful. You don't have a derailleur hanging down, so if this gets kicked or if it somehow tips over, which probably is not going to happen with that awesome double leg kickstand, uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. The point being, this is clean, it stays tight, but you do have to adjust it by kind of pulling the axle back with this adjustment right here. 
changing flats and stuff is, is not gonna be a whole lot of fun. So those tires, they really do a great job. They're balloon tires, they're extra kind of wide and that gives you some cushion, which is really nice. Let's see, 26 by 2.15. Um, on that and they have the reflective sidewall stripe so Schwabi uh, or Schwaba if you're in at Germany or you know I keep I meet these Europeans and they're like Schwaba and I'm like what Schwabi I don't know whatever we call it they they do great they, they have awesome um, awesome stuff and again a little bit smaller 26 inches versus on the full size Paxters those are like 27.5 inch wheels so maybe that brings the whole thing down and that's part of why I think they were able to make it a little bit shorter so you can fit it in different different places and even narrower you know I did I did some measurements the handlebars are the widest part of this bike whereas if you look up there the box is the widest part Okay, so coming back to the bike, we still got these excellent full coverage fenders from SKS. They've got this rubberized, you know, back piece that gets bumped. It's not going to get get busted. I think we even have a fender up front. Yep, that's right. So it's going to keep the box and stuff a little bit cleaner. Love that it has integrated lights coming back to safety. This is the Supernova E3 e-bike V6S. I believe it offers 165 lumens. Go ahead and power on the display hit this light button right here. Let's see, and there we go. I love that it actually steers where you point the bike because sometimes you've got these lights that are mounted, uh, well, just on the, the head tube and then they don't steer. A lot of times they'll also mount them on like the top of the sliders, the suspension sliders, and then they're bouncing all around. This one's right where it should be. It's like suspended. Excellent, excellent engineering there. Got a little bell for signaling letting people know that you're coming along. And then we've got a, a smaller, you know, it's more efficient, but it's a little light for the rear. I would consider putting a light on your helmet or your backpack or something like that, just to keep yourself visible. They have two colors. I think there's this light gray um, or this racing red, looks really beautiful. And then comfort wise, I was talking about those, those bigger tires, a little bit thicker, give you some cushion. They've also got uh, a Cane Creek Thudbuster ST. That's the short travel version that comes with the bike. It's not as adjustable as like a body float or whatever, but they do have different rubber pieces that you can put in there and it just kind of travels up and down as you as you sit on this. It's like Celly Royale Shadow uh, See, This is a little bit more active. You'll notice it's narrower, a bit more firm, but that's gonna make this a more active pedaling bike. Ergon ergonomic grips, locking. We've got the Tektro Ariga Comp. These are hydraulic disc brake levers with adjustable reach so you can bring them back a little bit if you're someone who's more petite. This bike only comes in one frame size, but it's pretty adjustable. When you look at um, kind of the angle on that seat tube, see how this is like vertical for the stem and then this is angled back. So the taller you make it, the further your reach. And you can adjust this, this goes up and down. It's kind of telescoping six different positions with a locking pin, as well as that quick release tightener. So it really feels, it feels solid. There is a little bit of play, you know, not a lot, but just a little bit of play when you're steering. And then they've got that, that linkage system down here to the front. Um, but you know, that, that's really, that's how it works. That's kind of how you got to set these things up, at least from what I've seen. And the ground clearance is actually pretty good. So driving this bike is the Bosch Performance Line CX motor. This is a mountain bike motor. Okay, so it offers up to 75 Newton meters of torque. That's the kind of power you want when you're hauling, you know, some cargo or a person up front. I think it works pretty well. It does have a little bit more noise, kind of a re, you know, especially in the highest level of assist at those higher pedaling cadences. But I like that Bosch allows you to pedal up to 120 RPM and still get motor support. Some of the other motors, they, they tend to fade out closer to 120 or they don't even go there. They get to 100 and they kind of back off. As someone who likes to spin, this is my preference. The weight on that motor and battery, low and center, right where you want it. The battery is pretty well protected. There's this extra tube for structural support on the bike, but it also gives you some physical support. If you're stepping over, you're not gonna kick the battery quite as easily. You can charge it while it's mounted to the bike. It does have a little you know, LED charge level indicator built right in. This weighs about 5.8 pounds. It's a power pack 500. So you're getting roughly 500 watt hours of capacity, 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours. It's a great, great pack. Bosch does have some, you know, newer power tube and some, there's some different configurations, but for a bike like this, that's, it's really about utility and accessibility. I think this is great because the battery has a built-in handle. You unlock it and take it off. 
it actually uses the same key as this Abus Shield 5650 frame lock, right? So, you know, you can slide this little metal piece. Maybe you can help me out, Chris. I got the, I turn the key and then he slides that metal piece in and then we can pull it out like this. So that's, that's kind of a quick and dirty way to lock the bike. And considering this is like a 75 pound bike and it's a bit bigger, it's unlikely that someone's gonna lift this up and physically like run away with it. So that the cafe lock makes a lot of sense in this case. And then the same key works for the battery. So we could take that off easily. I'm just gonna put the key back, kind of unlock it. Maybe you have to push down it. Oh, I didn't have it in quite far enough. There we go. We got it. We got it. So coming over here to the charger, when you have a higher capacity battery, it's good to also have a faster charger. And this is Bosch's four amp charger. It weighs about 1.7 pounds, really portable, fairly compact, uses the same plug port design, whether you're charging on the bike or off the bike. That's a big deal for me because some of the other brands, you have to have like a little adapter cable and stuff. And I just think Bosch, Bosch really nailed it with their charger, with their battery design. And this mount is backwards compatible. So if you say have a power pack 400 from an earlier e-bike, you could use it on this, this frame. It's the same interface. So I love that. And then Reese Mueller has set it up so you could add a second pack right here. So you can have up to one kilowatt hour of, of battery capacity. So instead of going 25 to 75 miles, you might be going, you know, 50 to 150 miles right? per, per double charge. And the way I think, is this one where you have to kind of choose when you're buying the bike? Cause they have a different, slightly different display. Yeah. So there's many different options for the, the front, uh, cargo area. This, uh, this particular system, you can also do a, a wooden box. That's actually similar to the Paxter, but not quite as the Paxter 60, but not quite as wide, but a similar material and yeah. using the uh, the straps to kind of affix it to the bike. Okay. However, if you wanted to carry a child, you have to use this carrier system, not the box. So the box would just be the more utility uh, setup. And then you have some different options like the, the glove box glove there. Box. That's a little feet area. Which uh, I could kind of show you how that, that guy works. So this is the... So one of the cool things about the glove box is that you can take this and you can fold this whole uh, deal look right at down that. in here. And then you have your whole cargo carrying capability. So, you know, you drop your kid off at school and then you want to go grocery shopping or run your errands. You have, you know, that capacity uh, much more. So pretty cool. Well, so we were talking about being able to upgrade the batteries and then making sure that you know you know i think if you if you want to buy that second battery pack it's like another 989 bucks or something like that right right which you know these batteries are expensive it's a high high capacity pack but then in order to do that like you're saying you need the wooden box or you need this canvas box type of thing because you need to be able to mount the battery pack to something that's right and that's another 150 to 200 bucks and then the kid's seat is another 100 bucks and it seems like you know with these bikes it's it's tough to complain about stuff because there aren't really that many options that are like this that are set up where you got your kid and it's short and they're really nailing it but you do pay for that the uh the new vinci model that we're looking at here the paxter 40 new vinci is like six thousand three hundred sixty nine dollars that's expensive remember it could be a little bit less expensive if you want the touring with the cassette and everything but um yeah you just you start to spend more and then they do have high speed versions so these ones are 20 mile per hour class one electric bikes they have up to 28 mile per hour class three and you pay like another five hundred dollars for that does that sound right chris uh generally it's a 200 dollar upgrade for the speed oh is it the it's about 500 more for the new vinci over the touring version. you got it right thank you right. there's a lot of pricing options yeah. at their website the point being um i guess there aren't too many cargo bikes that i can think of that even offer class three so having something coming back to like the reinforcement the frame design and stuff you know i I wouldn't sure if I'd feel comfortable with a cargo bike going that fast until I got on these. And I was like, these are actually pretty solid. You know, it right. feels good. And then, you know, the, the tension to like steering and stability, I can imagine myself going, you know, 28 on this. And especially yeah. if I was a commuter, you got it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a, the cool thing about all their bikes. They're really overbuilt. So they have that capability. There's no frame flex and they have the suspension, wider tires. These are some of the elements that I feel are really important on a high speed bike. Yeah. 
yeah exactly the big exactly the stability in those tires and you nailed it man so i feel like i hope i've touched on on everything did did we miss anything uh the one other thing that uh there is also an optional rear rack oh, which is not yeah. installed on this particular bike but it's actually yeah, on the paxter show me so <laughs> yeah just uh just really similar uh it's a, a rack time compatible rack so you have uh, different accessories that can kind of clip into here mm -hmm. uh, with the special rack time it's adapter. It's like the kid seats. They have the the look window compatibility or something. So you could potentially put a put a child on here. Uh, do note that the max uh, load capacity is 20 kilograms. So it's like 44 um, pounds or you something. You know, so yeah, kind of light kid can work, but uh, as they get heavier, you're going to want to put them in in you know inside the um, the box. Yeah, and you're making another so one of the other things that i constantly call out is like no bottle cage bosses but i i searched this bike and i was trying to figure out where would you even put it because you don't want your bottle horizontal spilling on your battery there's not a lot of room right here they they, they kept the seat too below so you can bring this down since it's kind of a one size fits all the telescoping handlebars you could try to put it up here but then if you turn it could be banging that box and then the telescoping so i i feel like I guess I'm okay in this case. What so were you gonna, you got an thing, idea? Yeah, yeah, so uh, actually, this particular bike has some different pockets inside the carrier, which you can huh. pretty easily put a bottle in. Put a, and, and you could reach it, yeah. We recently had this bike at one of the e-bike expos and, and you saw people just naturally kind of doing it. It was kind of interesting to see that design huh. in, in practice that, you know. Well, that's neat. Yeah, yeah, it, it's cool that like, there are so many options. I guess that's what I come back to. I, I can't think of too many things to complain about with these bikes. I guess I should say with the, the Bosch CX motor, you get that high torque, but there's that little bit of noise and you've got this smaller chain ring design. This is true of all, all of the Bosch performance line motors of this generation. That ring spins two and a half revolutions for every crank arm revolution. So there's kind of this gear box in there. What do you call that? Yeah, so it's a reduction gear. So basically, it, yeah, it, it it changes the ratio that the motor spins. It allows the motor to spin at a higher RPM, which makes it a lot easier for it to produce more torque. Yeah, it's efficient that way. And I've actually, one of the Bosch reps was like, oh, it also grabs the chain really well too. Um, but there's a little bit of friction happening there. So there are some, you know, really hardcore e-bikers. They're like, oh, I get a little bit of friction. But in my experience, this is still one of the most efficient highest powered and most responsive motors. It's measuring rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque a thousand times per second. And when you go up to EMTB mode in the assist levels, see where it says sport and then it said EMTB down there for a second? We'll do that one more time. EMTB, okay, well what that means is it's giving me the full range of power right now. It's not just turbo high power and it's not eco like kind of efficient low power it's the full range and it's really based on torque that's something they did for like electric mountain bikers so you could pay attention to the trail and like hold on and you know shifting gears is something you got to think about you also don't want to think about what level of assist i'm in so emtb actually works really well i feel like they refined that and for a bike like this too where maybe you have a kid up front or you've got you're trying to balance being able to not think about right assist is great Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we found people were really appreciating it on the cargo bikes. Um, yeah. you know. But that, that is only on the CX motor, that, that system. So if you get the speed motor, which is also, that's the one, remember we said there's like the, the regular New Vinci or Touring, and then there's the New Vinci HS, Touring HS, and the HS stands for high speed. Then you get the Bosch speed motor. That's right. And that one doesn't offer quite as much torque. I think it's 63 Newton meters. Yeah. And it's maybe not going to have um yeah that, that uh, emt email. mode yeah. yeah so okay let's come back up to the display panel i love that this display panel is removable i'm going to show that see ya that's fun take that off especially because again you maybe you're in the grocery store getting your groceries and you don't want someone to scratch this or just you know mess with it there is a set screw so you can lock this down if you want if you decide to leave it on permanently and on the right hand side here there is there we go a little micro USB port and it is active so you can plug your phone into that and charge it you know if you're using it for GPS or maybe a music player or something or an additional light that's really neat and only the uh, the Intuvia model offers that not their little Purion so I'm a big fan of this it's also big it's easy to read it swivels forward and backward operating it is is very easy you don't even have to take your your hand off the grip because of this little button pad over here 
powering it up is quick. It's backlit, so it's got this like faint blue glow at all times. You've got your battery. There's five little ticks there, assist level, and a little power chart on the right, speed, and then a bunch of different readouts in the middle. So we can press I here or here to cycle through. So odometer, trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and range. Range is so cool. You know, we were talking about the battery a second ago. Five ticks, it's 20% steps, you know? There, there's a big difference between one tick being 20% or 0%, and you don't know. So the range is neat. As you press plus or minus, you'll get to see an estimate. So the bike right now, it's pretty full. It says, we think you can go 72 miles in eco mode. And again, that's based on a whole bunch of sig signals and factors, battery capacity being primary, but also my last mile of ride performance is being factored in. Tour, 37 miles, sport, 27 miles, and turbo, my favorite mode, 22 miles. So it's the least efficient, but it's the most, it's the most fun sometimes. Um, and that's kind of it. I think over here, we also have this like walk mode. So see, I, I pressed walk for a second and then I could press plus. I think I'm just gonna give it a go. There we go. And the bike's gonna push itself forward maybe. Oh, yep, it tried for a second, but we've got it on, on the kickstand. So I might mess with that later. The, the neat thing about that is, again, you've got this full of cargo, but maybe you're walking through crowded streets or up a hill, or you're paying attention to your kid and you don't want to be riding. Walk assist can be pretty handy. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, recently we were in Miami, uh, Eric and I, one of the reps from uh, Risa Mueller, we were on the beach and huh. we had to actually walk the bikes through the sand. And oh, it, was, it came in it handy for really, that Really, really handy. That was one of those experiences that you know, I haven't had before, but it's like, wow, this actually is really helpful. So. That's nice. A couple of companies has, have disabled walk mode, Trek specifically, and I'm like, why? You know, I, I, I don't quite understand it, but there's always business decisions, I guess. Okay, Chris, we were here like 20 minutes ago and I was like, I think we covered it and I guess we hadn't. Is there anything else that I missed? You're the expert here. <laughs> I think I think that's most of it, yeah. You've yeah. met the founders of these companies and, and in part, you're the reason that they came to the United States when they did because you've gone to Eurobike, you met them and you were like, we really like your bikes. Do you have anything else to say about the company? Yeah, I mean, uh, some things that we should probably know is the bikes are built to order in Germany, so there's oh. a little bit longer lead time on them. Yeah. Uh, you know, some shops might have bikes in stock, but generally speaking, the bikes are built to order for you. So it can take a little while, but it's just a part of their philosophy that they're, you know, just always improving things and building the, you know, the newest, best bike. And, and you, the good thing is when you get the bike, it's specifically built for you. All the newest, you know, parts, the battery's not been sitting in a warehouse for months before it gets to you. That's and, a good point. And, and those sort of things. So, um, but yeah, overall, we've just been super excited. I mean, I've been watching their products for years and, and it's been great having them in the U.S. Been very successful with them. So, and I, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. They've been growing their network of dealers, uh, but if you're on the East Coast, Propel's right here. And these bikes are actually demo bikes. So that, that's why we have them. You would have to custom order these, but you, you have a few in the showroom to show people so that they can make a decision. Yeah, I think that's an important thing. And I think it's just definitely, you know, something to be experienced. It's Yep. Yeah, especially going to spend six grand, yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to give it a go. So speaking of that, maybe I should hop on this thing. And um, so pushing it forward is, is sort of how you get that kickstand to, there we go, and maybe kick it up like that. And then I can just hop on. I'm going to leave that window open and, and make a circle. And then maybe we can swap off. Will you hang out here for a sure. second? Okay, thanks, Chris. So I'm in turbo right now. You're not going to be able to see the, the belt because of that little cover. But, but that's kind of nice. You know, my pants aren't going to get greasy or snagged. It's less of an issue with a belt drive anyway. But I just like how, you know, these are these are really, you feel protected and you're going to stay clean. There's even like a tarpaulin cover that you can put over this for keeping stuff dry. Okay, here we go. Just going to pedal around. See that the wheel up there? You can kind of see it turning. I love that. a little bit of rattling going on yeah that's the seat belt slopping around on the on that wood super responsive motor but you can also hear it more that like 
Remember, we are in turbo mode. I'm pedaling at a higher RPM just to try to demonstrate that so you, you know what to expect. But you don't hear it as much when you're actually like way up here, you know, hearing the sounds of the city and stuff. Nice, disc brakes are working really well. The front disc brakes 160 millimeters and the rear is 100, well, actually 203 millimeters. So they're really, they're really capable. The reason the front one's smaller is because it's a smaller wheel. So you get a nice mechanical advantage on that. You don't need it to be super big. Okay guys, from this position, you should be able to see that belt just a little bit. Watch for how quickly it starts and stops and listen for the motor. It's gonna be more pronounced because you're mounted to the frame and I'm in the highest level of assist. But I'm also gonna shift through those gears. Bosch does have shift detection, which is really fantastic if you if you get the touring model that has the gears, because it's just gonna make it a little easier on the chain, the sprocket, the derailleur when you're shifting. It's not gonna bang as much. If you get New Vinci, there's, there's no banging at all because it's just this fluid, like there's a ball and it kind of tilts. The new Vinci is a little bit heavier, um, but again, you know, there's there's always a trade-off in, in what you're going for, and I hope this gives you just a feel for what the motor might sound like and how it works. I heard at the end there the motor kind of stopped just like and that's because we reached 20 miles per hour and actually pedaled beyond that just for just for fun um, you know it works pretty well okay this is cockpit view you're mounted to the handlebars just wanted to show you what it would look like and again you can listen for some of that noise in fact I might you know we're we are gonna hear some bouncing from those seat belts I don't want to See. Yeah, well, I stowed the seat, but the seat belts, it'd take a minute to, to take them off. They actually are pretty easy to adjust in terms of the height, um, but just keep that in mind in terms of, of rattling noise that you might hear. to steer this thing you know leaning it <laughs> whoa that's a pretty steep turn <laughs> let's take this curb oh yeah no problem that smaller front wheel is going to be able to take, you know, it's a little bit tougher on the smaller diameter and it keeps the, the box weight lower to the ground and brings the whole front end down. Hey buddy, hey, buddy. trade you off? Sure. Are you going to hop in the front? <laughs> oh, maybe. Should I? Why don't you make a circle and then we'll, we'll see. That Because that could be, that's a good test. I mean, you, do you how much are you weighing? Um, about 200. About 200 and I'm like 135, 140. So we'll be, we'll be testing that max weight. Let's do it. Do it. Yeah, it turns really well too. Is that ground clearance. Very nice. Very nice. Turn on the lights too. There we go. You got the beam. So that the front is adjustable. You want me to hop in there, huh? Good to go. Think we can do it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm gonna put my... We don't want to lose anything here. I got my helmet on, so we're, we're safe that way. Oh my gosh, this feels so small for me. Oh my gosh. Can we hold it for just a second? Got it. <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> okay. How's it don't, feel? Don't go any big bumps. Not too bad, right? <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny because there's a suspension, so I'll be, I'll be safe. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Beautiful. Oh. 
<laughs> it's a thrill. Is it, is it a little it, weird riding in reverse? Like It's so neat just looking up though, like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, my parents had a station wagon. Um, actually, I'm gonna show that seat post suspension here. Yeah, you're doing good. Anyway, my parents had like a station wagon where you could you could ride backwards. And it was actually really fun. Wow, that yeah, was sweet, man. The handle's great. I mean, was I that don't okay? Know. What do you think? I, I'm wondering if you're really 135 pounds. Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I've been losing weight, like hitchhiking my way around the country. Um, do you ever want to take that? So the other thing is, right now, Chris, you're barely even holding on, but the bike is stable because of that big kickstand. That's right. That's right. Yeah, which which generally would be recommended for mounting and dismounting. We were kind of breaking the rules there a little bit. Oh, but. that's right. Yeah, we didn't have that. I was like, yeah, it feel feel really solid. Yeah. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your equipment. Uh, these reviews are a lot of fun, Chris. Um, I think that's about it, you guys. That's the Paxter 40 New Vinci. I've also done the Paxter something 80. New Vinci 80. New Vinci 80, yeah. So you can compare the two, but that was 2017. This is 2018 model. So for the full write up on this with all the specs and measurements and comments and pictures, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, ride safe, have fun. Hey guys, we got back to the shop and I thought it'd be cool to show you the Paxter 40 lined up with the load. So there it is over there. It's awesome that it, you know the load has full suspension. The uh, box up front's a little bit wider, and this is where you'd have two kids facing forward. Similar suspension setup, but look at those front wheels. It looks like the load is, you know, six inches longer. And again, I do have all the stats on these. You can compare them back to back at electricbikereview.com, provide any feedback. I do like that the load has this adjustable angle stem too, so you can bring it out and, and really dial in the comfort. It's, it's a more comfortable bike. Uh, in my opinion. And these are priced similar. It's just a different, it's just kind of a different setup. Do you have any other thoughts, Chris, while we're looking at the two? Yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're both great. I think that uh, a lot of times, yeah, for high speed, I like having a full suspension. Yeah. That's one yeah. thing that I'll say, but you know, in general, I mean, this this does make it pretty comfortable with the suspension seat post, suspension fork, yeah. and those wider tires. but. Okay. That's one thing. That high speed, I you know, I really, really do like. It's good insights. That's yeah, and then we have the delight over there. I mean, you got the whole thing. It's sweet.